Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at amortization of bonds using straight line method, whether we have a premium or a discount bond. In the prior session, it's very important to review to know what is a bond, how to find the price of a bond. We'll review in this session just in case you need that additional material and amortization using effective interest rate method, which is the gap method. In this session, we would, we would look at amortization using the straight line method. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to actually look at an example. On January 1st, Adam Company issues $100,000 in bonds due in two years with 8% interest payable semi-annually. At that time, the market rate for such bond is 10%. Well, first of all, how much is Adam's bonds paying semi-annually well they're paying four thousand dollar one hundred thousand times the stated rate the offering rate times one half because it's paid semi-annually and that's always going to be the same well will adam's bond sell at a premium or will adam bond sell at a discount adam is paying eight percent less than the market of ten percent the bond will sell at a discount how do we find the price of the bond well the bond is composed of two things it's composed of the face value which is a hundred thousand and composed of four payments one two three four because it's a two-year four payments and each payment is four thousand dollar each payment is four thousand dollar now what are we going to do to find the price of this bond we're going to discount the four thousand dollar and we're going to discount the face value using the market rate. The market rate annually is 10%, semi-annually is 5%. Let's do that. So we're going to go and first discount the 100,000. We're going to go to the present value of a single amount because we only get the 100. We have to pay the 100,000 only once in four periods at 5%. 5%. The rate is point, uh, the present value factor 0 0.82270. Therefore, the 100,000 worth today $82,270. Then we're going to discount the payments of $4,000. We have four payments. We're going to go to the annuity table, ordinary annuity, and we're going to be using four periods, 5%, and the factor is 3.54595, and that's going to give us 14,000. So if we discount those four payments, they're going to give us 14,183. Together, it's going to give us the price of the bond, 96,400. 53.80 or the price is 96.453 percent first let's find the amount of the discount well the face value is a hundred thousand we only receive 96.453.80 the discount is three thousand five hundred forty six dollars and twenty cent the discount is a contra liability and what are we going to do with this discount we're going to amortize it to interest expense so it's going to increase our interest expense how much it's going to increase our interest expense since we're doing it since we are amortizing it using the straight line it's going to be divided by four so simply put we're going to debit cash ninety six thousand four fifty three credit bonds payable a hundred thousand and we're going to amortize the discount over four period now before we look at the amortization i would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate to take a look at my website farhatlectures.com my motto is saving cpa candidate and accounting student one at a time i don't replace your cpa review course nor your accounting course i provide you with additional resources useful material that's going to help you do better on your exam on your courses especially the cpa exam your risk is one month of subscription give it a try if you like it you keep it if not you cancel your potential gain is doing better your if not for anything take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the cpa exam this is a list of all my accounting courses with material such as true false multiple choice questions and exercises my cpa material is aligned with your roger wiley gleam and Be becker so it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to the 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. Share it with others. Connect with me with, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So what are we going to do with this discount? We're going to amortize it for period, over four periods. And each period, we're going to amortize to interest expense 886.55. Let me show you what it looks like. We're going to have a discount. Discount, again, is a contra liability. And we're going to start with $3,546.20. And each period, each period means each with each interest payment, we're going to reduce the discount 
886.55 and as we reduce it as we credit the disc as we credit the discount we're going to debit interest expense of 886.55 and we'll do this for four times the discount will go away let's take a look at the amortization schedule we start with 96.453 well since it's a discounted bond it's 100,000 minus any n amortized premium happens to be at the beginning three thousand five hundred forty six dollars and twenty cent and that's gave us the 96,553 now we're gonna make our first interest payment the interest payment will be composed of two things, which is in total $4,886.55. 4000 is the cash amount, and 886.55 is the amount we're going to amortizing. So the interest expense is 4886 We're going to debit, uh, sorry, we're going to credit the discount, as I showed you, 886 and we're going to credit cash. What would the second payment looks like? The same. That's why it's called the straight line method. $4,000, we're going to amortize $886, and the interest expense is the cash plus the amortization. So let's take a look at this slide and make some over, overall observation. The book value, the carrying value, or the book value of the bond is increasing to $100,000 because it's below. It's increasing by the amount of the discount we're amortizing. Interest expense is always the same, and that's by nature the straight line method. Interest expense is higher than the cash payment. Why? Because initially, initially we received less money than the 100,000 than the face value, and the discount is eventually fully amortized, specifically to interest expense, and the bond goes back to its face value. Let's take a look at another example where the bond sells at a premium. Well, it's the same bond, However, the market rate is 6%. First, we'll start with the cash payment. The cash payment is the same, $4,000. Remember, Adam is offering 8%, less uh, greater than the market. The market is offering 6 Therefore, bonds, Adam will sell his bond at a premium. Okay, let's compute the premium. We're going to discount the face value using the single, ta single amount table, four periods. The market rate is six. It means we divide it by two equal to three percent. And the amount and the and the and the factor is 0 0.8849. That's gonna give us the the present value of the face value. Then the four thousand dollar will be discounted at for four periods, three percent, three point seven one seven one, which is gonna be give us fourteen thousand eight sixty eight. Therefore the bond sells at one oh three seven seventeen or one hundred and three point seven one seven percent which is a premium how much is the premium the premium is the difference between the cash and the face value three thousand seven hundred and seventeen premium is an adjunct liability we're, we're going to divide this by four to amortize it over four periods since we are using the straight line method and this is what the journal entry would look like when we actually issue the bond after we issue the bond we're going to have to amortize it how are we going to amortize it well we have a premium account and in that premium account, we have $3,717.40. If we'll divide it by four, it's going to give us for each period $929.35. Therefore, as we are making interest payment, we are going to be reducing the premium, $929.35. But the premium will also be reducing interest expense. It's always going to, be, it, it will reduce interest expense for us. So notice the debit to premium, the credit to interest expense. Therefore, as we make a payment of $4,000, our interest expense is only $3,070.65 because it's reduced by the amount of the premium. Therefore, this is what the first entry would look like, the interest expense, the cash amount, and the premium. And after that payment, the bond goes down to 102788.05 by the amount of the premium. The second in interest payment would look the same. The third and the fourth, they would always look the same. And as we are making interest payment, the bond carrying value is going down. By the way, the bond carrying value start at 100000 plus the N amortized premium, $7,717.40. And that's going to give us the original carrying value. Let's have some overall uh, overall observation the book value is decreasing because it's a premium bond it's going to go down the interest expense is lower than the cash payment why because we received more money up front it's a premium the premium is eventually fully amortized against it's going to reduce interest expense interest expense is always the same and the bond will always go back to its face value of a hundred thousand let's take a look at some overall overall uh comparison between the two this is a discount bond and for a discount bond 
the book value is increasing. For a premium bond, the book value is decreasing because you start above and you go down. Here you start below and you go up. Interest expense is the same. Interest expense is the same, whether it's a premium bond or a discount bond, if, you're, if you are using the straight line method. Interest expense is higher than the cash payment. Yes, for the, discount, for the discounted bond, the interest expense is higher. For a premium bond, interest expense is lower. Discount is fully amortized, premium is fully amortized. Bond is back to the face value, bond is back to the face value. At the end of this recording, I'm gonna invite you to go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and work additional multiple choice questions and look at additional resources. Again, my motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting student one at a time. Don't shortchange yourself. Keep your CPA review course. It's a great resource. Use me as a supplement. I do have additional resources. Invest in yourself. Your CPA exam is a lifetime investment. You only have to pass it once and it will pay you dividend for years. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.